What's up, y'all? This is Coach Skip Friday back at it once again. And we're going to look at this right here, the maze and the Mindy myth. Because many people talk about corn and all that stuff like that. Let's see how long corn was in Africa for. You know, was it, did the European introduce it? I mean, what was really going on? You know what I'm saying? This is by MDW Jeffries. The Mandy, Mali, Meli, or Mandingo, people who occupy the buckle of Nigeria have a beautiful and complex creation myth, including the appearance of maids and its eastward migration down to Niger to Lake Tobito. The occurrence of the myth in the group is widely scattered in the Sudan, suggests great antiquity, and the migration can be dated a long time before the discovery of America is implied. This implication casts doubts in the traditional view that maids were introduced into Africa by the Portuguese after they attained it from the New World. All right. This paper is a review of the evidence of the presence of maize in West Africa before the time of Columbus. It begins with the discussion of the Mandy myth and the various tribal traditions that supports this view as an iniquity of maize in the region. Next, it presents supporting evidence of various names of maize among West African people other than the Mindy, and some inferences of botany and considerable iniquity of West African form of maize. It goes on to examine the evidence from Portuguese sources for the introduction of maize into Portugal from Africa. Then it re-examines the argument that maize must have come from Portugal, Portuguese, because the word for maize in certain tribes also applied to European or resemble to your Portugal in sound. Pointing out that such words, in fact, are being applied to white men from the East having long before the arrival of Portugal. Here, the caravan route between Senegal and the Nile is described. All right, I did a video on that. It's a caravan. Maybe that's a southern route. You know, many people, they get us focused on the northern route, you know, through the Sahara Desert and what can then come down to Morocco and stuff like that. But it was a southern route, you know, through Lake Chad. You know what I'm saying? From Senegal to the Nile. It's the route they're talking about. I can't think of the route offhand right now. The route between the Senegal and the Nile is described with some aspect of trade along the routes discussed. Hopefully in this paper we get to see it. Finally, is a possible for the source of pre-Columbian maize in West Africa suggested. The Mandy myth. According to Dunnerling, 1957, page 132, it is a traditional center of the ancient Kitita Empire, which was founded in the 13th century by Santi de Quita. The Kitita Empire was called Mali by the Arabs, and numerous populations of French Sudan and Upper Voto claim to be descended from the common stock located in the Mindy. However, the Barbs, Ritos, who have special knowledge of genealogies, assert that 30 lineages scattered widely in West Africa arrived from the Mindy and have a common origin. These lineages are believed to be represented not only among a single linguistic tribe group of Mandingo, Malinka, Barba, Dula, and Kassan, but also among the traditional populations of Senegal, Sudan, Ivory Coast, Guinea, Togo, etc. The geographical axis of the organization, which has been outlined in its upper part of the River Niger from a source of Lake Bidido. Lake Bidido itself is an extension of Niger. Solomon, 1939, page 60, note, the Mandingo, more correctly than Mindy, Mindy, constituted one of the most important groups of French Senegal. They occupy the most region between the Atlantic and the Upper Niger, as far south as Attitude 9 North, and including such in large important tribes as Adula, Asonin, Jacqueline, Barbara, Barbara, Marcelin, Manalik, and V. Then book two, which is the which the Mandy eventually became connected, is noted by probably 1670, page 367. Speaking of the Mandingo Kingdom, he wrote, the Arabian and other merchants drive a great trade here for gold, which they say this country is abound with, besides with other commodities, which at Timba, the chief city, they admitted freely to barter for. The Mindy have a creation myth, still celebrated every seven years, with the ritual recital of the myth is in part, in which the arrival of the maize plays a predominant part. The myth describes the creation of two kinds of maize 
or Kaaba, or Kaaba Sana Rule, the red maze which came first, and the Kaaba Sada, the the Kama Saman, the maze that arrived later. It traces the eastward migration of a people cultivating maize down in Niger from what is now Kambanga, according to Denelect, 1950, page 124, the is called Kaba on the Ata of Lake Beto. Eastern points out that according to Darling, the green toes of various people are in agreement of certain details of the myth, among them that the facts of the Mandy village is called Kaba maize, and it has been the center of field of maize. The word Kaba refers to the appearance of fur upon the earth of the mythical creator, Pharaoh, and the third uh, and the fifth generations who move from the Mandy, live in a place where the maize is sown. Eastron, assuming that the maize reached the Mandy by way of the Portuguese about AD 1520, has difficulty in reconciling the date of this agreement on the mythical essential details and the lineage that has been settled widely in separate regions of the Sudan long before the 16th century. The disappearance of the Mandy people cannot be accurately dated by perhaps associated with one another of known upheavals in the region. Campbell, 1957, page six, notes for instance, Jordan regards the establishment of Wolof Empire as relatively late and associated with the appeals of the movement in the population in Senegal region as a result of the fall of the Empire of Ghana under the blows of the Abon Rabbits, and then the Sudan and Conquerors, Sonia Kente and Sana Kente, or Sita Kita, about 1240. Shaw, 1905, page 126, describes the conquest of Timbuktu by Mali in AD 1330, and the later burning of the city by the Mossi who lived east of it. An absence of better evidence as the movements of the Mandi people, the traditions of the migrations of the Tai Shikin Akan of the Gold Coast provide some chronology. Palmer, 1925, page 27, held it is very probable the Dekan people in general, together with the Fanti, the Shanti, and the Shada, formed part of the ancient kingdom of Ghana. Based on his conclusions of the similarity of the tribal names and the addition among the coastal people, a powerful and influential city called Watala. There is also a record, according to Bomber, that when the Europeans first came to the Guinea coast for trade, they asked the natives, which was the chief power in the land, and were told to apply to a people who ruled the old city of Alamatan or Watala. According to Merzowitz, 1957, page 85, the two lineage of the Khan claimed to have come from Watala. She also recorded a claim for migration from the Dia, which lies between Wakala and Timbuktu. The Casa Rule Rule historian in the MLT speaking in the media in 1946 at Dumbo presided over the Wakanura king in the Anji Agaja said, Bruno, Akan, Ganja, and Yukon usually come from Dia or Dia or Nia, a state which the capital had been suited in the Timbuktu region of the Niger. Mani, 1954, page 211, also saw notes a contradiction of ancient intercourse of Dia and pointed out that not many be, uh, being the dynasty of Sanke named Dia, but the city of Dia. He knows that the people of Dia are has said to be found in the famous city of the Ning, the commercial emporium and products of the South. So, you know, breaking it down, and in the North. Yeah, it was founded in 181250 AD. And the name the Ning means Little Dia. The Casa Rule held the origin of the name and one of the clans that migrated was the Agua and that the first group in the Northern territories of the Gold Coast were the ancient rules of the Mana Princess, the second Bono and the third Bono in the Mo. Rafa's 1960, 23 explains. In the past, the greatest and most important Akan kingdoms in a territory which is now called Gano was Bono. In the modern time, it's Ashante and it was Ashante. Bama was founded in 1295 and became powerful only in its wealth and gold. Merchants in 1957, page 84, 
also known as Bono Kingdom of the Ivory Coast, appear to have been founded by a kind migration in AD 1000. Some causes of migration are still remembered. Thus, the Kaiser rule gave reasons for the Akan migration idea, the fact that the Muslims drove the Akan away. Certainly, just before 1295, there had been a civil war in the kingdom of Mali in which Dia was involved. The supreme usurper, Shakura, is noted by the Frosting, 1931, page 62. Now that the other migrations is still current in many tribes' histories, it appears that a little bit before 12, AD 1300, there was a large exodus of people eastward along the Niger and southward in the area of the Gold Coast. The Akan certainly reached the coast in time for the first European visits about 1450, judging from Kimball's translation of Paterum, 1937, page 120, as Moreno de Orbis, compiled before 1509. Patera writings reported on the presence of the site of the present Armina, which is a slave castle of the Hakkes, Jeffreys, 1953. According to Merceritz, personal communication, 24th of April, 1955, the Akan claimed that they brought maize with them from Deneen on a southward migration. She stated that maize was brought by the Akana lineage, whose royal Okoro group was, according to Merceritz, 1951, page 30, 32, was one of the seven clans that founded the Bonio Kingdom about AD 1295. The Nicobe of Maze is vouched for when its connection of the 12 families from all of the Thai speaking tribes are traditionally descended. The names of these families are words of Northern dialect, but it is still retained by the Southern tribes, although it has several cases of different words now in use for animals or objects from which the family designation is derived. Thus, the Cornstalk family is still called Abotofu by the southern tribes, although their more common name is Abu Na, of which 1819, page 231, writing on a shate in the Gold Coast, he states, taking some pains to acquire the etymology of these names, but with per imperfect successes, Obuto signifies a cornstalk and Abu Pain a plantain. Parrish, 1915, page 8, discussing the common origin of the Fulani and Ashante noted, the existence among them definite in the families. It is certain that some of them are much greater in antiquity than others. The principal families are the Amazin, the Plantain, and the Abarutu, the Cornstalk. These are generally acknowledged to be the oldest. The iniquity among, of maize among the people is also indicated by its correction with their current region, with its connection with the current region. Radate, 1923, page 47, noted that maize may not be eaten upon a day of the week sacred to the god, Balsarumo. Balsarumo is, according to Radate, the name of the oldest and most important notos, the Zonary Patrilineal Manius. The noto of the eight Ashanti kings and the first muscle ever given to men. The connection with the maze, names with the clans, names with other details that have been cited and suggested among the, the Ata, the Watata, the Dia, and the Dunjing, and got maze from these regions adjacent from the ancient kingdoms. The Mindy controllers of Timbuktu before they migrated about 1295. In addition to other peoples of the region, also tend to support the Mandy myth as to the iniquity of maize. The Ghana of the Gold Coast and the autonomous people among whom the Akan settled after migrating south upon the Niger River from the Niger region have a tradition narrated by Barton, 1865, page 160, indicating they were familiar with maize before the Portuguese arrived. The guy held the name Bafulu from Abel, maize, which is given to the European because the first strangers came to the coast. The women were grinding and said these men were as white as corn. The first strangers were the Portuguese, who reached the Gold Coast about 1470. Ga, popular thought, was no anomaly given to these strangers. The name derived from Ga and the name for maize. Indeed, the Ga do not connect their arrival with maize with the arrival of Portuguese. A Yoruba tradition about maize was recorded by Bowen, 1857, 
page 47. Indian corn is common throughout tropical Africa, where it probably existed long before the discovery of America. The Yoruba has a tradition disfigured by superstition that it came from the East. Elsewhere, born 1859 and 58, page seven recorded, Indian corn is said to have been brought beyond the Niger by a yellow monkey. It may not be irrelevant to the remark that the neighbors sometimes called by foreigners monkeys by ways of desertion. Burton, 1863, page 321, who was the council of Blights of Biafra, so he was the council of the Blights of Biafra, also recorded that the Yoruba tradition that maize was brought to them from the eastward beyond the Niger by a yellow monkey or a beetle or a white man, according to the boys, as old as a baboon, which tend to show that it's not native to the land. Today, Obio means European, but the only yellow foreigners in contact with the Niger would be Arabs. More important, however, the mention of maize in the lyrical praising of the Yoruba god Omamandir Araatu is Omamandir. Alaatu, 1962, page 52 to 51, explains, in Yoruba theology, Omomer has been always placed first and far beyond identities and all else. He is over all. In the following lyric, he is being sung as one of those authority attested for all over the earth. One account of one Omomer brown rat and the rain ceased to fall no more. Yan's prompts but do not develop. Ears of corn fill, but do not ripen. So it's showing you in their system, in their prayer system, they got it, you know, corn was already being talked about in West Africa. The Yoruba's original was given to in and down. In the last line, Abota Tekti Koba. Abaka is a, is a usual Yoruba word for maize, although here it's translated as corn. The ethnic composition of the Yoruba is by no means simple. Ford, 1951, page two, know that Philippe himself, a Yoruba, divided his people into two main cultural groups. The F.A. S.A. Eastern, who considered himself the center of the original habits of the F.A. F.A., who, but Dallas, well, who Dallas include many excursions occurring at various times in the Orba Yoruba, which he includes the Iwe Gabi, the Gabi, Iwe Ga, excuse me, held it ascends for later migrations from the East. It is therefore completely clear that the FAF and the, the Ibagan traditions separately. Several Yoruba traditions suggest that the tribe is originated in the East, either in Egypt or in Mecca. With these traditions, I am not concerned. A Yoruba migration is suggested. However, the connection with the unrest in Timbuktu region that scatters the Tenderly lineages and send them to the Gold Coast is discussed above. Palmer, 1928, Volume 3. Page 54 considers it. It is probable that the tribal name Yoruba is not as we thought connected with the Yari on the Niger, opposite the Busu, but with the Yaru, the chief town, Songhe, on the shores of Lake Dido, formerly in the center of the so called Cirque or the Cirque peoples, some who appear to migrated first with the Mushi, and hence Morshiba or the Yoruba mythology, hence the FA, since the FA in the present Yoruba land. Herman held that this superstition would explain the name of the Yoruba ancestor, Lama Randu, as being a Tore, Alice, a man, or a Tem Shack, a class term. Palmer, 1928, volume three, page 87, noted the objection to the theory that the Aba people who formed a large aggressive migration from the East created a large cultural empire which designed and denigrated to form a new Ara and the Ikari and other kingdoms had a direct share in the genesis of the Ifa and concluded that the responsible hypothesis, hypothesis concerning Ifa as the center of the world as early as 1000 AD is that of the offshoot of a colony, either a Ghani or ancient Kintua king. That is, the influence of Ghana, Kinkusa, or both, extended down the Niger River through Yuwa, Bosa, Yura, Oya, and the Efi. Such contacts existed in the way between the Niger, of the Niger between the northern regions and the town of Efe Efe in the 18th century, but by no means knew then. Jeffries, 1955. The facial markings of the Yoruba tribal lineages have been examined by Yoruba Story of Johnson, 1921, page 107. 
who in this diagram refer to one group with three vertical lines as being characteristic of the Mindy and of the Jalabada of Yoruba families. The word Jalabada is similar to the word Bambiri and the name of a Mindy tribal group. Johnson noted that these particular facial markings were no longer in use because they're said to be distinctive of aliens naturalized among the Yoruba. Many immigrants will fall into such groups. Bowen, 1857, the 14, page 47, noted of the maids that the Yoruba esteem this, this, this grain so much. They have a proper which says, Indian corn is the chief support of men. Foscom, 1951, page 45, wrote, the corn is completely a part of Yoruba life and the informants of the Ifa challenge the statements that it come from America. It insists that corn has always been grown and used by the Yoruba. These claims so exasperated Bascom, who appeared to overlook so much similar evidence that he wrote, the belief that corn was known and used in Nigeria long before European contact is so deep rooted and widespread among the Yoruba that it's necessary to state that the accepted Pacific scientific position is that corn was domesticated by the Indians of Central America and was unknown outside the New World before Columbus. Balboa, 1952, page 14, raised the question of the movement of maize from the Ifu when he sang, I do not know all, but I wish to know what clothes the maize plant wore when he first came to Abagana in the area of the Uflu town. Balboa Lata described how maize came to be distributed east, west, and south from Efe Efe, which supports the maize came from the north. Bob Ballard in 1966, page 22, also known as that, the effort to about maize plant asserted that Akari was the town where it first grew profusely in Yoruba land. Indeed, the maize plant originally helped, originally lived in Ife Efe, but it decided to leave town in search of another place where conditions would be satisfactory favor for its growth. It tried every town south of the Efe Efe. Bob Boa's translation of various traditional Yoruba poems it seems recent and since the material of the poems is folklore and not easily dated. As I suggested elsewhere, Jeffries, 1963, page 128, however, there is no evidence that the sacking of Oro, referring to it in a poem, which then in 1837 suggested by Willen, 1962, page 9, and not the sacking of Oya by the new kings in the reign of the ninth Yoruba king, is suggested by Johnson, 1921, page 159. Johnson gives no date for this event. But Smith, 1965, page 747, indicates the fall of Oyo due to the onslaught of the new took place about 1535. Indeed, it would be surprising if the folklore poem did that dealt with that deals with the 19th century event, but a mention of the first appearance of maize in Oberito. Maize was imported by Adams, 1822, page 84, as an export crop as early as 790, 1790 from Lagos the main Yoruba port at the time. Therefore, maize must have been growing in the Yoruba hinterland before the, that date. References appear to suggest that it's growth before the sacking of Oyo in 1837 by Newt. Carter, 1964, page 85, has said that the maize marked bushel shirts found in Yoruba land and at their being. Body found, found widely at the depths of two to 12 feet in the city a refused sheet of spread of over 20 square miles in the country, it is clear evidence of some iniquity. So, May's been there for a while. The Eba facial marks are also identified to those among the Mandy, a set of three vertical lines are somewhat longer. This similarity suggests that some of the eagle images of Mandy Oregon. The Eba appear to have erupted into Yoruba land from the area around Timbuktu. It is reasonable that actually this migration to the same civil wars was sent to Tashi speaking people to the Gold Coast. An account of migration has been given by Latasi, 1924, page one, a scion of the royal house of Abatua, a leading Eba city in, in Ruba land. Those she wrote, it may be asked of, of what race are the Ebas descended. It may be answered they originally sprang from the race of the other Obolanadu, a native of Anawandu in the Niger territory 
who have in many years have migrated from there and settled at Ifa Ifa. The Yoruba story history suggests that the disturbance of money Ifa broke away from the Yoruba leadership of the Oso group, centered in the disturbing influences of the rival new group. The fullest account of the introduction of maize among the Ifa occurs in the work week of the Yoruba historian Moore, known to his people as Afa Safe. Moore, 1916, page four, wrote that his Takisa was to finally attain the grow of corn and even land. He gave no indication where hence maize come from, but other traditions state it came from the north or from the east. The arrival of the maize among the Kessa gave them extra food supply and advantage over their neighbor. Moore continued, upon taking this advantage, Okojo, who was then king of the Kessi, ruled in this township that no corn must be sold to other Iba tribes without first being soaked in warm water and then being dried in the sun in order to render it useless for planting. His subjects readily and strictly submitted to his rule and therefore became the only suppliers, corn suppliers in Iba land. The other tribes were not aware of this trick and were not only surprised by the seedling corn and seed thrives of the Kessel farms, but stupidly attributed to a certain superstition of causes. But after some years, the Akani, the king of Anna in the capital of Iba of land, gave one of his daughters a castle to a co for wife. One day, the Akana sent out his daughter a castle for a supply of corn. And the daughter wisely fed three fowls good corn and sent the fowls with her father with a private meshes. That soon as the fowls were delivered to him, they must be killed, and the corn found in them should be planted without further delay. The Aka acted on this advice, and the result was a thriving corn and an Aka fern. This selfishness and mean trick of Oda and his subjects was thus betrayed by other tribes. Consequently, Oda, the capital of the Kessi, was then besieged and destroyed by all other evil tribes, and the king Oro himself was captured and killed. This king, Ojoko, of the Kesi may or may not be connected with the Okoro, the Royal Okoro group of the Angansa of the Akan, who were the bringers of the maize. But in any case, the association of maize with royalty again suggests that the maize was a royal prerequisite. This reflected among the Kesi of Northern Ghana, where according to Karnal, of Cardinal, 1920, page 147, 144 to 147, Sagram, is now Memo and Maze Pamina. The Sagram of the Chief, Kings in Africa, often equated with serpents, Jeffrey 1947. And it's still custom in some African kingdoms for an animal, for an annual tribute of maize to be sent to the palace as maize in waiting. And in light of these facts, the following note by Solomon, 1746, page 52, on the people of Dami reveals yet again a royal connection with maize. Annually, from the time when maize, or the serpent Milo, is sold until it grows up to a man's height, it is pretended that snakes sees all the beautiful women which please them. The assertion by the Yoga that the evil guy, evil guy, were a jury of the maize is supported by the incident during the Civil War in Southern Yoruba land in which Oyo was involved. A famine fell upon the land. Johnson, 1921, page 215 states, it as was said, that the description made by several families into the amount of six heads of cowry, and a special messenger was sent to Evil God territory to buy corn. He returned, but there was no load on his head. It was six heads worth of corn was carried in a bag slumped over his shoulders. He protected it, and beneath the cloth, he wrapped himself with him, with, so that no one may know what he had with him. It was a treasure, subscribed by, shared by all subscribers by counting the grains. Cortez, 1958, page 158, produced a viral evidence that the Iron God was early distributors of the maize. He stated that the maize came with the names GB, stem applied that the maize were obtained from Ibudaba, known as Akapa in the central Nigeria, and as Alaga or the Ibaga or the Daba in southern Nigeria. This clarifies, he maintained, here the inexplicable Dami in Yoruba and other terms for maize. 
He calls the attention of the Yoruba and the Igbo, knowing that the, this term, meaning Satan, was used by the people of west of the Igbo country. He knows that the Igbo attained maids from the Eba and there became secondary distributors of the cereal. According to Anadande, 1953, page 224, who identified the cultivation of maize on the coastal strip between Lagos and Long, which incidentally, was incidentally include part of the only region of the West Coast where the climate condition allows the cultivation of Sotham. Nomi traditions retains nothing of the origin of maize beyond the fact that on page 220, a long, long time ago, in the region of Metafotan, the principal authority, according to legend, Maze and Pernapente had a few presided by the god Fa, the god of divinity, who should provide nourishment for man. Eventually, Maze won out. Loco was made a god representing the first agriculturalist. As Adam Loco among the Fine and Osiris Okoto among the Yoruba, he is to be the first fruits offered. It is deemed me the son of the Omila and Umberto who created maize. Maize included names included Gavado among the Gorin and Agabi among the Fon. Aladante outlines a complex maize culture in which includes numerous receipts, including formation of maize, planting and harvesting conventions, ritual use, including libation, games, and toys, and finally, proverbs. He comments that there was, this is surprising that the plant of American origin have not come to be considered indigenous of Dindiani, but has entered into the field of proverb, folklore, and tradition. The Mindy of Sierra Leone is known to have migrated westward from the Valley of Niger. Cup, 1961, page 181, remarks, the Mindy names for maize, Namagoya, and Penicena, Pelinoya, Suggests that maize is noise to them before the penicillin, that is, already having a name for maize. When they discover corn, which resembled it, they gave a new crop the name Pelipan, which resides from the older one. Names for maize. Not only do the traditional number of coastal tribes indicate they were brought maize from a region near in the great trade, great trade centers of Niger. But many maize names indicate the maize diffused from the Mandi. Cortez, 1958-1959, has assembled evidence to this effect and yet remains valid, even though he considers, contrary to the present argument, the maize, the Mandi attained maize in the part of Portuguese. Cortez, 1958, page 159, maintained that such names, kind of Mandi of the Mossy, indicate the sagram of the Mandi and see as a widespread pattern maize names in Africa. He writes, Kanamandi is more of the Masi and Kanamanda of maize. Kafo Ka Manasangram, and what is usually said and written in West Africa, you see the Mendi meaning of son of the Mendi. Since written above words, what is the kind of consider that many of the words attached to Ka and Sangram has a meat ruling of large or big? I, however, see no reason for considering these words as tribal names. Cortez works on the many names allows it to fill the gaps in the region of the Overvolta and the Ivory Coast. He notes on page 121 in the translation line that the Mandingos furnished the people of the Volta with maize among the Floro, Tafa, Tapimi, Guabibi, Daba, and the Dafasi. According to the following maize name, respectively, Nengi, Mangi, Nengi, Kamenti, and Kameni. Cortez, 1958, page 122. It's also noted that the Fulani of the upper Volta had for maize, Amri and Abami Ra and Abami Bai, that is southern coming from it. The Malinka coming from the Bambri and the Bani two of the, of the Ivory Coast. In some, some are dialects of the south and north of the maize, and words like Tapan, Fulani, and for me to show that the Mandingos brought maize. He pointed out that the new and the Fulanis of Nigeria called maize, Abaki. It's probably that the words transmitted from the west to the east by the Fulani. So there's many, many names for maize in West Africa. Danzel recorded the following names for maize and all of them from the form of the Mandy Taba. 
the Valani, the Luwinki, the Fata, Jana, the Malinki, the Suzu, the Newt, and the Kawa all the rest spread names for Sakam. And as Darren pointed out, the Mandingo, Malinka, Bamba, and the Dala are members of one language group. It is difficult to avoid the assumption that these names are the pattern of the sundering of the Mandy. This made the Mandy a deficient local focus of maize, in particular of the people of the upper Volta region and those of the Ivory Coast and the New on either side of the Niger. Red maize. The occurrence of a dwarf type red maize in Guinea is another phenomenon indicating importation prior to the 16th century. Red maize was, of course, observed early in America, occasionally been observed for special use. Anand, Anand, 1950, 100, um, page 154, notes that among the Indians of Mexico, native nobles and other persons of high ranks sometimes ate bread made of red maize pressed into waffle-like thinness. Someone similar was brought to my notice by G. Carson of the Rand Daily Mail, Johannesburg, who reported to me in 1968 that members of the Swazi royal family painted a dark, planted a dark red maize for its own conception, preferring it to any other type. Cortez in 1958, page 112, notes that in Morocco, there is red, there is sakam red, or maize, and we write the first variety of the red grains. The distribution of the names, the distribution of the names of red maize among the tribes and the periphery of the Mandy complex indicates it is important to their culture to attend to support the claims that red maize was the earliest type to appear in Africa. Denzel, 1937, page 551, gives the following names, Iwu, Malinka, Domi, Sura, and Tu. Red maize is also reported by early travelers of the Guinea coast. Or early travelers that came to the Guinea coast seeing there was already red corn there. The order of Gonzalez Lopez account was complete in December 17, 1814. And according to Blake, among other items that were listed, 24, 25 quintiles, two arobas, 16 rats, and a quarter of red corn that he received in the contents of Sierra Leone on the 20th or the 15th of Santa Claus. Listen to the letter. In all, therefore, Sierra Leone in 1514 provided 513 quintiles, which is by 5,100 pounds, which is 50,000 pounds, paying the quintile 100 pounds. But this total would not exhaust the entire crop going by the Africans. Maize seen on a synagogue in the land of the Wolof by Alvarez Amina in 1554 is considered by Portes, 18, 1958, page 112, 112, have been red maize. Boseman, 1907, page 297, who was on the Gold Coast in 1690, wrote, the grain of Malijo is white and red. White is the most beautiful, and red is most by the people held by the best. So people ate the red one the best. Duncan Wild and Wabi in Diani in 1846 note, the valley rears usually four crops, a small red Indian corn. Duncan's description of small red Indian corn raises the question of the size and also the dwarfing. The cobs of the red maize I seen is somewhat smaller than the improved white and yellow cobs grown by the farmers as commercial crop. Further, a report by Wallace and Brown, 1956, page 59, quotes Joseph Cooper, and a pioneer American maize breeder, as follows. In or about 1772, a friend sent me a few grains of a small kind of Indian corn, the grains which is not longer than the, larger than the groove shot. He informed me they were originally from Guinea and produced eight to, to 10 ears of, on the corn, on the stock. These grains I planted and found a reproduction to the answer in the description, but the grains were small. Why so we can so grain of corn is being shipped back to the America from Africa is being shipped back to the Americas for growth, red corn. Wallace and Brown, in 1956, page 61, cited Peter A. Brown as noting, in 1837, the word hamenic, commonly known as guinea corn, and explains that the word hamenic is a normal case that refers to color, and indicates that guinea corn was so-called reddish. 
They concluded long years of selection and evident made a dwarf out of the growing the tall tropical corn. They argued that the dwarf red guinea corn was probably brought to, by, to America by some slave trader and undoubtedly came from equatorial Africa. The dwarfness associated with antiquity, working on Asiatic maize, close of as transmitted by Kidd and Reynolds, 1954, page 276, noted in 1928. The dwarfness, which is characteristic of Asiatic maize, is also a characteristic of sulfo, flax, and other ancient crops. But these characteristics are found in a large area, and for them to manifest a maize in time, of course, is required. Kosterov came to the conclusion that Asian maize, if not viewed as native, at any rate, is very ancient. Introduction of maize into Portugal. Merrill, 1954, page 2373, noted, Master is well informed of what hasty and uncritical authors convinced that maize is cultivation in Spain and Italy before Columbus discovered America. So it was already corn in the Amer in Spain and Italy before Columbus discovered America. You know what I'm saying? So this is a big, big, big lie. Soda, 1960, page 784, actually marked the same effect. Peter Monter gave positive testimony of maize in Granada prior to Columbus. So this is in Granada, Spain, grown by the Moors. There's also other books I got to back that up. You know what I'm saying? I said that it was, you know, that was just a big myth. It was, which also kills that, you know, transcontinental, the African was going back and forth dealing with the so-called Native American Indians. But that's just for a later time. Let's keep on going back to the study. Peter Martyr gave positive testimony of maize in Granada prior to Columbus. Maize, in the, right. one of the lines of entry of maize into Portugal is indicated by the names connecting maize with the Moors. I just said that, of course. May, who's the Moors, who conquered Spain from Morocco. Sorta, 1960, page 784, notes a Calatan name, Galata de Moro, or Moorish wheat. Roberto, 1941, uh, page 959, 19, and stated in 1531, Mays was known in Portugal by the name of Morocco or Morocco grain. He pointed out on page 658 that the rural finance has noted that in 1531 and 1532, that among the crops grown around Lama Pango in Portugal was Mala Morocco. And he confirmed on page 659, translation, that the Mala Morocco, the, the Moors wheat, or the Moroccan corn wheat grain, appears clearly distinct from the Monorena in the other Paco. In a detailed way, the very tall cane, the cob, and the kernels, but described by the lead, no doubt that it was maize and the crop was recent to that region. On a trip to Minimatapa, now we in South Africa, now we in the deep, deep South, we in Zimbabwe, you know what I'm saying? On a visit to Minimatapa in 1645, Gomez noted according to Axelson, 1959, page 56, that flour was made there from Grande or maize, of which is something along the banks of the Douro and the Madeira. And the, between the Douro and the Minute is called the Morocco, which name come from the Moroccans in the tension among the farmers that the Moors, when they took possession of Spain, brought it with them. So we brought, when we took possession of Spain, we brought corn with us to Spain, not the other way around. Donahino, 1963, page 34, a Portuguese scholar of distinction has summarized the greater part of available information on early maize with the penetrating comments. He noted on page 34 a reference to popcorn maize in a poem of Ridge Moan, wrote in about 1940 and 1492, which means that before 1515, the date of publication, and probably by the end of the 15th century, Maize on the cob was eaten in Portugal, <clears throat> and so commonly that a poet referred it. All right, so it's poems that come back from 1492, the same year Columbus sailed, sailed the ocean, that's saying that there was already corn in Portugal and they ate it off the cob. 
Plainly concludes that I incline towards the interpretation that all these corn corn names are the same in one. The center of diffusion was Guinea, which is Africa, from Morocco indirectly, and then from Guinea directly, it reached Portugal. In mentioning Guinea, the coastal Black African, or the Sudan Kingdom south of the Senegal River, allegedly called the Guinea Coast after the ancient Ghana, uh, ancient Senegal Kingdom of Ghana. Gonna acknowledge a first, acknowledge a second Portuguese tradition of the source of maize. The fact that Morocco lies at the end of the caravan route from the Sudan offers a way of reconciling the two traditions. It is often argued that maize was introduced into Portugal from Guinea during the reign of King John II, 1481 to 1495. Thus, the Santa de Rosa de Verbo, 1865, volume two, Page 68, the Esmeralda published in, 70, in 1798 wrote under the heading, the Morocco or the Maso Grosso, some say at the time of King John II and the discovery of Guinea, the Portuguese discovered the Rosso and brought it there to Portugal. Roberto, 1941, page 657, quoted Manuel de Farra in the same effect. The Sutos Rosso de Bonto, 1865, page 89, noted that it was the will of one of the Sama de Grauer, dated 1289. We're going way back now. The Tains and Request to the other heirs and said that we can infer this late date that Maze is already arriving in Portugal. So let me make sure this is correct. It's in 1289. Maze is already containing the request and the areas of Maze is already arriving in Portugal from Africa. So hopefully this stuff kind of spells this myth. I know this is long winded and there's a lot of pages, but I'm just dropping the scholarship down to dispel the myth that, you know, corn been going on since pimping, since been pimping, since been pimping. It's been there in West Africa and East Africa. So then we'll keep on going with the scholarship. I'm gonna finish this up, you know. Such an inference on the date, in my opinion, of Versailles and other authors who have said that the Arabs brought corn in the Spanish Peninsula. In addition, Marquez, 1944, noted that Emilio was listed among the imports to the port of Alatinga between 1223 and 1279. That's how long corn been up in there. The serial early noted on the travelers to Guinea coast, in particular between the Senegal and the Niger, is identified to be as maize. Nearly all of this coast lies within the natural, the high rainfall forest belt where sun does not grow. In addition, common for the size of grain and identification, serum was classified as by Hill, 1952, page 324, with small grains, while as weather wax, 1954, one page 196 noted that in the ranges of the size and the form of the grain, maize Far surpasses other cereals. The size of maize is reflected in its names, Moso Grosso and Melodio Grande in Portugal, and Grosso Melodio de Indies in France, and Molarigo Grosso in Italy, and the Great Wheat in Britain. So Africa's feeding all these countries like it's still doing today. And it's back in, in the 1200s. Much of the early maize in West Africa is flint maize, and the grain of that of which is are larger. There are two references complaining in comparison of the chickpea, which the Portuguese botanists, there are at least two references complaining comparisons with a chickpea, which Portuguese botanist Wayne de Silva, 1958, appears to be satisfied of the learned center indigenous to the south of Europe and therefore the possible comparison of the Portuguese travelers. According to Weatherwax, 1954, page 32, maize is so comparable in the Concilio pamphlet of 1494, giving information about America and a pamphlet dealing with the food of the Indians. Weatherwax held there is no reasonable doubt that the plant described as maize. There is here is also a prolific kind of grain the size of lupin rounded the size of a chickpea. Maize in West Africa appears to be so rounded. Figure one of page 298 shows a relative size of grain of West African maize, chickpeas, and sarabarum. 
in Kamamoso's description of synagogue he visited in 1456. He remarked, according to Crohn's 1937, page 42, translation, that the indigenous grows various kinds of mullet, large, small, and large. The phases used in the Italian description of maize grocero, the common Italian term for maize. The size of this grain is grown on the Guinea coast, is noted by Venom Mendez, 1951, page 54. Before 1506, when he remarked that the Glamour Zona Grande, according to the Savagat, 1961, page 1223, 123, an anonymous Portuguese pilot paid five visits to Soko Tamon between 1520 and 1545. On one of these visits, let's see, here's some pictures of the, of the, of the seeds, you know what I'm saying? I know it's gonna pop down. According to lots of the translation, the slaves were fed only mullets of reba, which they call maize in the West Indies. They look like white chickpeas. In Cape Verde Islands, the anonymous pilot described maize in some detail and commented on its ambiquity. Blake, 1942, page 149, translated the relevant passage of Monadiso that are published in Venice in 1554, reads, it began to sow grain, which they cause a mara or two in the West Indies mines. It's like chickpeas and it grows all over uh, these islands and along the African coast. It's the chief food of the people. So we up here and got the corn. It's already well known. This is 1554. Alan Tenvanez, Fandez, 1951, page 136. They that minerals of Mara was exported from the Guinea coast to the island of Santon, where it was grown for the first time in 1502. Monad, Monad, 1960, page 71, accepted that the cereal, that this cereal was maize. Nonetheless, Mali was in Mara and the Fananas at the Santon must be maize. Lorraine's de Silver, 1959, page 314, Know that may may be cultivated in Santun for a very long time, and that Venom Fernandez calls it Mazan Zamba, which so he gives a description that can be accepted that the maize was already known to the African people before the Armada of Columbus brought it to from America. So this is all known, you know what I'm saying? Back in the 1500s, we bring in maize to them in the 12, 1200s, you know, brought to the Moors in Spain, Portugal, all type of stuff, you know, so. That hopefully this should kill it on off. We're gonna keep going. The turn point to this translator Campbell was employed by King John II of Portugal in West African waters. In a company with other king's captains, discovered many places, rivers along the coast of Guinea. He was associated with Diego Amzama and founded in 1482 the castle of St. George de Mia on the Gold Coast. He was a slave master bastard. In 1503, he was sent by King Emmanuel to India with the Albuquerques and returned to Lisbon in 1505. Visiting Mozambique in his outward return journey, in Mozambique, maize was already established crop among the Africans. So in Southern Africa and Mozambique, maize was already established crop among the Africans in 1505. You know what I'm saying? So that's about what, 12 years? Later, after, you know, about 12 at the most, 13, after Columbus. Anyway, it was known to the Portuguese trading there as, you know, under this preference system refers to maize as Elsmer de Orbis of 1509. The following asterisk is taken from the many reproduction of power works in the year 1956, Milo being translated as maize. Near Cape Lirando, Harmoner noted, among these mountains can be found obtained much fish, rice, and maize. Page 86. Of the Magalingas and the Barefour of the Grand Rio Grande and the subject of the Mandy King, these people have great abundance of rice, maize, and yams. Page 72. Of the Jaca Laracas, of the Jacarans, they live on rice, maize. That's on page 76. 
and of the fortune of Amia and Axum, and there the natives live on maize. So even near the fort of Elmina, the slave fort, it was maize running around there. The natives around Cape Lopez, they live on meat, maize, and sugar cane, page 156. All these things were first in the region along the coast where climatic conditions prelude the cultivation of cereals of the rice and maize. The addition to the Portuguese evidence in the, are the notes of Idris and Leo Africanus, who commented on the kingdoms of interior Africa. Texts of the original are not available to me, but are noted as for their 18th century translator Moore, 1740, had no scruples against mentioning maize. Iris published the Arab geography in Rome about 1150. According to Moon, according to Moore, excuse me, 1740, page seven to page 13, Iris noted of the summer master that the Nile, now remember, listen to this right here, pay attention. The Nile, which they call in Senegal, the Senegal River. The Nile, the Senegal, washes for the country from east to west. There on the banks of his Indian crown grow. The plenty of the corn, nor the sorts of grain, is not so great among a large grain of millet. Is not so great among them as a large grain of millet. Of the Negroes of Kameen near Lake Chad, Iris noted that they had a large grain of millet. More also noted in the footnote of this large grain of millet was Indian corn. Leo Africanus, the Godovian Moor, visit West Africa in his travels, which started in 1492. His account was written in 1526 and published in 1559. Of the Gullah Kingdom northwest of Timbuktu, Leo wrote, according to Moore, 1740, page 65. It produces some quantity of Indian corn and plenty of white, little white grain, of which I never saw like in Europe. Abelard, 1956, volume two, page 464, Translation runs, there is but little cereal in this country, some millet and another type of grain. It's white like chickpeas, which is not seen in Europe. Europa noted that millet was a boar brush millet and suggested that other than more likely sorghum, but a description of a round, white, and like chickpea like point to the maze. The kingdom of Guber on a Niger, Niger Leo noted, according to Applewire, 1956, volume two, page 472, millet and grain are abundant. So is another grain that I have never seen in Italy. And it sounds, and but it is found, I think, in Spain. This third grain can scarcely be sorghum, which is an old world crop and well known in Southern Europe. I discuss elsewhere, but still other evidence from Portuguese sources of the existence of maize in large quantity on the Guinea coast, south of the Senegal. Sartum, 1960, page 785, agrees on a daily basis of the Portuguese writings on overseas that maize in Africa was pre-Columbian and that the Portuguese took it to Portugal from Africa and not from America in the first instance. This Portuguese evidence destroys Portes, 1958, page 121, Claimed that the Mendi attained their maize from the Portuguese. The Mendi who supplied their Kamamana to the Vultic people would perceive it themselves and still further west from the Portuguese on the coast. Thus, historical evidence lend credence to the Mendi myth as an iniquity of maize in West Africa. So, as you cited all this stuff, I'm going to end the video right here. I mean, I could continue on, but as you cited all this stuff here, that maize was in Africa for a long, 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 long time. And it came from the east, so they say. You know, as you see it's in Southern Africa, in Mozambique, in the Kingdom of Minamatapa, and in Zimbabwe and stuff like that. It's in the Central Africa on Lake Chad. It's, um, we brought it to Europe. You see that it was in Portugal in 1285, 1220. It's reported that we're bringing it to Portugal, we're bringing it to Italy. So, if you believe that maize come from Mexico, it had to be a type of transfusion that happened before then to get the seeds that far away to there. As you even see it over here, and I stated that um, 
They was even sending it back, the African seeds, the African grain of corn, they were sending it to the Americas to help grow. You know, but also with Leo Africanus and Idris, Idris is a pretty good um, historian, Arabic historian. You know, he said that it is growing all up and down on the Niger River, on the Senegal River, which he called the Nile, which is another thing people got to pay attention to, because you know, the Nile in the East Africa looked the same as the Nile in West Africa. This is something that happened. It's not really discussed in history. And we got to pull the shirt off, you know, pull that skirt up. But that's another video for another time. Um, this is Kosia Funday. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully y'all learned something that corn was in Africa since for a long time, since Memorial. And um, it's been cited and noted that we were supplying Europe with the corn. Many places in Europe, which Africa still does today. Africa feeds the world. Anyway, subscribe to the channel. Much love. Peace.